Let's bring in NBC News chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel. He is live in Jerusalem this morning. Uh, Richard, what more do we know about the release of these two women, 179, 185, and this broader strategy by Hamas? So you just played some of that uh, extraordinary press conference that we just heard, uh, an 85-year-old woman tough woman who just uh, was released last night and is already speaking uh, to reporters, describing her experiences, speaking through uh, with the help of a family member. And she described how she was uh, taken on the back of that motorcycle after Hamas uh, fighters broke into uh, her kibbutz, started looting. She was thrown on the back of this bike and then taken into these tunnels. Uh, she said that she was kept there with uh, other prisoners, that Hamas seemed well prepared. They had uh, shampoo and, and other toiletries ready. They uh, replaced the, uh, the, the, the and cleaned the, the, the toilets that they chose not to discuss politics with her. Uh, she even shook their hands when she left, not uh, because she liked them or enjoyed this experience, of course not, but because they, they treated her decently. Uh, so an extraordinary count of, of her uh, of her of her ordeal. But of course, uh, Israel says there are about 220 hostages who remain in Gaza, still in captivity, including uh, the husbands of these two women. I, I know that ne negotiations to free more hostages are ongoing. There had been some hope yesterday to free a larger group, uh, and those discussions are continuing through the mediation of, of Qatar and, and Egypt. Uh, overall, uh, the military and humanitarian uh, situation is still heading toward escalation uh, with Israel continuing its airstrikes talking about uh, more about 400 targets more than 400 targets uh, struck in the last 24 hours in Gaza and uh, uh, aid workers in Gaza say unless they can get that fuel in of course there is a concern that it will be diverted to Hamas but uh, aid workers from a variety of organizations are saying unless some fuel can get in generators are going to run out of their re uh, reserve supplies uh, at hospitals and then incubators uh, respirators other kinds of equipment will not be able to function. Diplomatic efforts are underway. Uh, French President Macron arrived. So we are seeing diplomatic uh, activity, but so far no breakthroughs. So Richard, uh, publicly anyway, the Biden administration is saying the IDF, Prime Minister Netanyahu, they make their own military decisions. At NBC, we're reporting behind the scenes the Biden administration is advising Israel to hold back on its ground invasion to get these hostages out first and to get humanitarian aid in there. What's your sense of those negotiations and how long will Israel really wait? Well, I, I think we're we're seeing a bit of, of, of posturing here. It, it, the Israeli military, if it wanted to go in and was fully determined that it needed to go in, it would. It would not listen to the United States. It would not be held back. Uh, if it had a plan and it felt that the time was right to execute it, it would go ahead. But I, I think the, the United States, as its closest ally, is urging caution, is doing so in a way that is publicly acknowledged. That does give the Israeli government a little bit of, of breathing room because the people here are, are, are angry. They are furious. They want to see uh, a military response and they want to see it now. So now if, if this government can say we are attacking, we are working, we are freeing some hostages and our allies are, are pushing for time, it does give them a bit more space to come up with, with a plan because going into Gaza is not going to be easy. Just going back to the, the this tunnel uh, story where, where these, these um, hostages are being held and I, I spoke to a senior Hamas official yesterday who said the hostages are being held in, in multiple locations. Uh, I personally have been in tunnels in Gaza, uh, not these fighting tunnels, in smuggling tunnels, but the, the entire Gaza Strip is flat. It's along the sea, so the ground is quite soft and sandy. And for years, Palestinians have been digging networks of tunnels, and they are extraordinarily deep. You have one tunnel leading to, to another. There are uh, many, many different layers to them. It is an entire labyrinth under Gaza. So in order to deal with that, you, it is going to take not just two weeks of, of planning uh, like, like Israel's had right now in response to, 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 these, to these attacks uh, that took place on, on October 7th. There's nothing quick and easy about this, that's for sure. NBC News Chief Foreign Correspondent Richard Engel in Jerusalem this morning. Richard, thanks so much. Mika?